Now, normally, I like to open these uh, these pieces with a reference to a fictitious D&D &D party. But today, I am going to reference a film that was a favorite of mine when I was younger um, and probably illustrates the shield master feat um, as well as anything. In the early 1980s, um, Disney came out with a movie called Dragon Slayer. And this was uh, was like a stop motion uh, animation for the dragon, but it was extremely uh, well done stop motion animation. They they had like Lucasfilm's level quality on how smooth the um, animation of this practical um, dragon uh, monster that they had created for the for the film was and there was a point early on in the movie where the young hero uh, who starts off as an apprentice to a wizard he goes into this lair where the dragon is and he uh, finds the dragon uh, but he is somehow lucked into building a shield that's made out of dragon scales. And so there's this confrontation where the dragon sneaks up on him and um, then breathes fire on him. But the hero is able to duck down behind the shield and it keeps him from uh, taking any damage from the fire. Now that is one of the things that shield master the shield master feat can do if you're subject to an effect whether it be dragon breath whether it be fireball whatever that gives you a dexterity save you can put your shield in between yourself and um, the source and if you make your saving throw instead of taking half damage you take no damage all right so hey everybody Welcome to Skills on Sunday for December 27, 2020. I'm your host, DM Galabond, and yes, today we are talking about the Shield Master feat. All right, let's go ahead and look into this uh, and see how this feat works and where it has come from in the annals of the game. All right, um... Uh, the first uh, antecedents for Shield Mastery uh, go back to 3rd edition, where you had the Shield Proficiency, um, and uh, you, had, you also came in with Improved Shield Bash. And Improved Shield Bash is really kind of the uh, thing we want to look at in terms of what led to... Uh, what led to the Shield Mastery feat in 5e. Uh, if we take a look at the Improved Shield Bash, what this does is it, you bash with a shield while retaining its shield bonus to your armor class. Uh, you may still apply the shield's uh, bonus without this feat. The character performs a shield bash, loses the shield's uh, bonus to AC until his or her next turn. And that is a, um, that is a thing that... Uh, that is available then to the um, to players in third edition. All right, now in fourth edition, we have um, shield push, which again is uh, something that uh, comes into play with the shield master feat. So shield push um, allows you to push a target uh, one square um, uh, to a target hit by combat challenge attack. And the way that works here is if you hit a foe with an attack granted by your combat challenge class feature, you push the target one square after dealing damage. And you must be using a shield to benefit from this feat. Now, um, 
the most of the editions of the game have a rule for how much damage it does when you smack somebody smack into somebody with your shield and actually back in original D, &D um they had different kinds of shields that were intended to be used as weapons uh like there was a horn shield that had like spikes on it uh you were supposed to hit people with it it would deal spite or piercing and bludgeoning damage and then there was a blade shield which would have like little blades almost like dagger blades uh stuck on the shield and you would um, hit that and people could do uh, piercing and slashing damage with those shields I believe all right and now we finally come to the shield master feat itself okay uh, you use shields not just for protection but also for offense you gain the following benefit while you're wielding a shield if you take the attack action on your turn you can use a bonus action to try to shove a creature within five feet of you uh, with your shield and if you aren't incapacitated, you add your shield's AC bonus to any dexterity saving throw you make against a spell or other harmful effect that targets you. And if you are subject to an effect that allows you to make a dexterity saving throw to take only half damage, you can use your reaction to take no damage if you succeed um, on the saving throw, interposing your shield between yourself and the source of the effect. So now that... Um, that's a good point in what it says there. That ability to take zero damage is not free. It's not automatic with the feet. You have to use your reaction to put your shield there. So what that means is that means if you use your reaction for that, if later on in the round you would be in a position to make an opportunity attack, you can't do that because you've already used your reaction to um, to prevent the damage to you. So. Uh, there's just a few things there about the shield mastery feat. All right. Hey, everyone, if you like what we're doing here on the channel, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, click the post notification bell so that you too can be notified every time new content drops. And with that, I want to thank you guys for dropping by, ask you to uh, check out some of the other content on the channel. We have archives of our live play games. We have uh, all kinds of other content about other aspects of D&D on the channel. I uh, would love it if you check it out. Take care, everyone. Good night.